and a woman, woman, woman in every way. Yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in Welcome every to Every Way woman. woman. There are some major changes happening in the talk show world. Live from Los Angeles, here's Every Way Woman. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Way Woman. So I want to continue the dialogue on the expectations of women, especially women who are middle-aged. Mm -hmm. I know, Amber, you and I were talking about that. Mm -hmm. And and I told you, what is middle-aged? I, I don't age. know. I oh, mean, okay. I, I was hoping we had to no, yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm wondering. Okay. And it's like, how are we even, you know, classifying middle-aged? Now, if, you know, 30 is the new 20, is right. middle-aged 60? Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you got that. Well, I got the wisdom when I'm not middle age. <laughs> Shut up! I'm ashamed of my age, no, but I, I did turn 34. So I don't know if is that middle age. I you're mean, on the brink of it. You're not getting on middle, middle age. age. No, no, no. Like, you don't hit middle age until you're like about 20, 25. Cheryl, are you I'm middle age? Uh, no, um, I'm right here with Amber. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're not. But I am looking into the rim. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking <laughs> over the, the edge. I will tell you, it is 45. It is the forgotten stage That's of a age. woman's life. Mm, 45. 45. What do you mean it's forgotten? Because oh our God, world has changed so much. Yeah. Our roles have changed. Our mothers used to be younger. Yeah. They used to, how, how, how old are your moms? My mom is still in her 60s. Wow. Do you know how many moms I know who are in their 60s that have teenage kids? Mm -hmm. Middle Absolutely. age has changed. Well, because we, we put our forgotten years before wow. the family, and then they had a family later in life, and mm -hmm. now middle age just happened, and we're in a whole another place of our lives. But I'm not it's changed because of technology and yeah, everything. So everybody's trying absolutely. to say young, no computer. And it depends I mean, on what culture you grew up in. Yeah. And yeah. what what technology you live with. But mm -hmm. you, Cheryl, I wonder, do you have any sense of the expectations that you're, you know? Facing, you just got a new house. Yes. Um, I mean, that's a huge yeah. responsibility. Well, I know. I think. I think. Um, I'm not middle aged, but I think that moment when your responsibilities increase exponentially. Mm. Um, like, for example, my mom is also in her 60s. Um, fortunately, the later half of the 60s. I said fortunately because my dad passed away when he was 66. Mm. So to even just surpass that, I think is a good thing. But then I look at her, and it's like. She's independent now, but I can, you know, I, I can see the, you know, the aging starting to set in. And, yeah. you know, I, I know that, like, we're, my sister and I live nearby, and we're trying to get her to move closer to us. Because, so you can look in after her. So we her. can look in on her. I mean, she's already been a cardiac patient, so we've already had to look after her in that response. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, you know, she's, you know, she's healed from that, but, but we always worry. Do you have Anna, a fear of taking care of your mom? Or? You know what? No, because I'm, <laughs> I'm fortunate that we have enough family resources that we can get her the care oh, she okay. needs. But um, Anna's been looking after several of members mom. of yeah. your family. Yeah. Well, I take care of my mom. She's young and I, I feel, I don't know if it's being the whole Latina, Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, it, but it, it, I just feel like the necessity that no matter what, even if I had my own family, I still got to take care of her. Right. Like, I, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, she's, no, she's I have a mom. confession though. Recently, you know, I found out my father was stabbed. Mm -hmm. And in that, I got fearful. Because I was like, oh my goodness, I have to take care of this man. What if I have to take okay. care of him? What if he's dead? What if I have to bury him? You know, How can you handle all of that? You know, he doesn't have any resources that I know of that will be able to take care of him. So that was that fear of like, what do I do when I have to go find him? Or, you know, I, don't I mean, know. What, what do you do? What kind of expectations do you have? I, I really don't have any expectations of him. So I just kind of feel like it's kind of like me going to search for someone who I don't know. That you have that. But like it's just you feel you got you to feel right. But I feel as a child, and this is my as parent, it's, it's I have to go out and go and try and find him. You so know? it's our obligation then, as children, to become parents to our parents at some point. I think yeah, I just go way back. Yeah, well, to it's when in we the were, in when the we were Asian younger, culture, right. and it's kind of built in that usually it's the first, the oldest child, preferably the oldest son, oh, that good. is going to take oh, care. So that's take care of that. It's built in. It's built in in that culture. Okay. So unfortunately, I'm the oldest. So right now, I'm the mom. 
and, and the oldest son, which is my brother. Okay, so, then I, so then I have a question. What if it's al it's almost like an indirect parenting relationship? Like, for example, what if you had to take care of your husband's parents? How does that oh. impact you? Because I know I, I they're on the, their own. The relationship I just got out of they're on their own. The relationship I just got out of, you know, my ex, my, you know, my ex boyfriend. He was the oldest son um, of eight, but his parents and were largely dependent upon him. Mm -hmm. And I. I just looked at my future. That's a that, huge. I looked That's at my future of, you know, especially, you know, taking care of his mom. Right. Now, she has daughters, mm -hmm. but quite frankly, I felt like the, the burden of her care was going to fall to me. And the, uh, the prospect of that was... Well, I, I think the whole mm -hmm. prospect of those obligations, expectations is terrifying. I can hardly mm -hmm. handle my life as it is in my 20s, but to be expected to care for my own family, my husband, and my parents, and I mean, and they're my husband's parents... My God, it sounds like hell. I don't know how any woman could balance those expectations. I really yeah. don't. Well, they, you know, I think sometimes do it. what people forget is men go through a midlife crisis. And we yeah. all acknowledge it. We're, We're not it. alone in this. But women go through one too, and we ignore it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Either well, that or we suck it up. Ladies, I, I definitely want to continue this conversation when we get back from this break. Are you in every way woman? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you in every way woman? If you've been wanting to turn that 12-pack into a six-pack, the doctors from Finesse Plastic Surgery are going to talk to us about the tummy tuck. Everyone wants a flatter stomach, but for some, doing crunches just isn't enough. Dr. Gown and Dr. West are here from Finesse Plastic Surgery to share some options on how to get a flatter stomach. Um, now, I understand that there's some really innovative and also some extremely invasive ways to get that appearance of a flat stomach. What would be some of the most innovative ways to start? Most invasive? Well, I'd like to start just by telling you about why this happens. So, certainly in women, it's babies. Yeah. In men, it's Budweiser. <laughs> so, it, to, to go back to the women with pregnancies, not only does the skin stretch, but that six pack that you see in athletes also stretches and goes out to the sides. And so you get a little bit of a loosening of the tissue and less of a firm tone to the midsection. So any combination of liposuction and surgery can refine that trunk to get that better, tighter look. So you would do both, liposuction and surgery? Oftentimes it's, uh, both are done, sometimes one, sometimes another, and when you combine them together, it's called a marriage of dermoplasty. Okay. So the least invasive or the less invasive, it's going to be something you can use in technology, like a cool sculpt. What is a cool sculpt? So cool sculpting is a device that's been around for several years now. Essentially what it does is it exposes the fat that you're having a hard time getting rid of. It exposes it to cold. So the suction device is attached to you, pulls the skin and fat away from you, and exposes your, your body to a cold temperature. Your fat is actually more sensitive to cold than the skin is, so you can hurt the fat cells and make them go away without hurting your skin. It takes about two months to see the results. The best candidates for that's going to be somebody who's in otherwise pretty good shape, you know, somebody who's maybe going to the gym, but no matter what they do once they hit a certain age, they just can't get rid of little trouble areas. Maybe it's their, their flanks, or maybe it's the lower part of their belly, or for some people, the, uh, the fat along the bra line. So people can come in and do a non-invasive procedure in the comfort of our office watch, while they're watching a movie and have some of that fat melted. So that's probably the easiest thing that you can do. Now, can they, can they just target a certain area? Absolutely. We have different panels or different uh, applicators for the different areas. So mm -hmm. inner thigh, outer thigh, lower abdomen, upper abdomen, and back. We fine tune it to every patient. Okay. So that's, that's the non-invasive, that's the cool sculpting. Now fast forward into the next stage, which is liposuction. Liposuction alone is good for women who are younger who still have that nice tone, but have a little bit of those excess areas that they want to get rid of. Those are the regions where no matter how much working out, how many hours of the gym, they still have these collections of fat and they're stubborn and they're running away. Um, how long is the recovery time for a liposuction? A liposuction, people, you know, it depends on what you're asking. It, the, the part of the question is when can you go back to work? So it, depend, it really depends on how much you do. For really targeted low volume liposuction, you might, be, you might be able to do the surgery on a Thursday and go back Monday. If you're doing multiple areas and you're taking out a lot more fat, the person might need a week or two off work. It also, of course, depends on what you do. Right. You know, do you work behind a desk or do you have a really active uh, type job? In general, liposuction is, is a relatively short recovery where you have discomfort, but we don't put much, in, we don't put many limitations on you because we haven't uh, really, uh, we haven't sewn the tissue. We haven't put muscle back together that we have to worry about healing. It's more of a soreness. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a couple of mommy circles. 
And that's kind of an issue for a lot of us mothers, even though we, we can get hid and back into shape, that we seem to have this excess skin that hangs. And it's not necessarily fat. What would you do for so a mom like that? That's exactly what needs to happen with this. And I think if we're to retire the mini tummy tuck, we need to go to a mini tummy tuck. And the difference between the two is in the mini tummy tuck, it's a smaller incision. And it's mostly targeted to take care of that lower pooch of extra tissue. Yes. Versus a full tummy tuck when there's more excess and loose skin all throughout the entire in, the anterior abdomen, and that requires repositioning of the belly button, a little bit longer incision to get more of that skin to create that nice tight plump pooch. So you actually move the belly button when you do a tummy tuck? When you do a full tummy tuck, yes. You make an incision all the way around it, you pull the skin down over it, and then you make a new opening for the belly button to come out. So it actually stays in the same position, but you make a new hole for it. Wow, <laughs> that sounds interesting. Well, it allows us to get out a lot of all the extra skin out that you and you'll never notice the incision because it's hidden inside the belly button. Now, is that something um, a man would go through? I mean, with women, we tend to, you know, but what about a man? Do men go through tummy tucks? They, they certainly do. And in most cases, a lot of men store fat differently than women, and so it's more central fat. But they still do benefit from that same procedure that we do with our tummy tucks, which is bringing that central musculature together. With women, they have babies, and that stretches out that six-pack, if you will. And so they get what's called a diastasis repair. It's really creating an internal corset. If you remember how the corsets are made, they have the tight straps with the strings and yes. you're pulling real tight, but it also brings in the midsection. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing internally on top of lifting and then stretching and removing the excess skin to give the overall hourglass shape to get that final nice refined result. Going a couple of cc's of liposuction, then you have a new absolute full package. So if you don't have an hourglass shape, you could actually create one. You can certainly get somebody closer to that shape. I mean, it depends on what, you're, what the person is starting with, but somebody who is in otherwise good shape, that you go ahead and put the muscle back together, you remove the excess skin, you can absolutely accentuate their natural hourglass shape. Well, thank you, gentlemen. That was extremely informative. Um, if you would like to find out more information about tummy tuck and less invasive procedures on that flatter tummy, please check out their website at finesseplasticsurgery.com. Are you in every way woman? Dr. West, I'm interested in finding out what I want to do just a little bit, not too much. I'm conservative, so what would you recommend? I want to be out here, but I want to just keep the liveliness to it. What, what would you recommend for me? Well, yeah, you, the, the key with all these things is it really starts with a thorough evaluation. So what I would recommend is make an appointment with us. Come in, and we'll assess you, and we'll figure out what are your goals, uh, and we can show you photos of a range of patients, uh, what for surgeries, what surgeries they have chosen, what implants they've chosen, so that you can start to get an idea of it. If you're talking about implants, we'll show you a range of implants. There's a huge range. There's hundreds of choices. We'll show you anything from a very small implant to a more moderate to a large implant, and we'll let you try them on. And you'll get a sense very quickly what makes sense for you. You know, it's, it's like the porridge. You're going to find out what's too small, what's too big, and what's just right. All right. And then, Dr. Gowan, the question my husband's going to want to know, he's going to like that, but the cost. Because I just want to do a little something, what can I do that would be cost effective for my pocketbook. So, you know, can you tell me about cost-effective procedures? That's what he wants to know. <laughs> so, so certainly the breast augmentation is not going to break the bank, but when you add more procedures such as lifts and otherwise, it's going to cost more because it takes more time. I can't really give you a good assessment until we choose which procedure would work best for you, and then we can work out financing options that we have available through our office that can make it available to any person. Everyday Kitchen is next with Everyway Woman. Are you in every way woman? Blanco, Reposado, and Yeho. What's this all about? We're tasting tequila when we come back. We're bringing the bar home. We are here with Mandy from 88 Tequila, and joining us is Cheryl to let us know the difference about tequila, which I'm so excited because we get to play with tequila. Yes. I didn't even know there was a difference. Yes. Tell us. So many differences. Um, our tequilas are actually ultra premium sipping style tequilas. So they're made with 100% blue agave. It's not your typical low grade tequilas. Ours are a little higher end. So the budget is a little bit higher, but it's very comparable to some of the other higher ends. What's blue agave? Blue agave is the type of plant that the tequila is made from. There's hundreds of different types of agave plants, and they all taste and smell so different. And blue agave is the top. It's the premium. and So it has a taste. 
Yes. What kind of taste? It's hard to explain. <laughs> it's a little hard to explain. Okay, okay. Because for some, it, it all depends on your taste buds. For some people, it could be sweet. For some people, it could be a little tangy. For other people, it could be a little sour. So it just, it all depends on your mouth and what you like. Yeah, right. what you feel. What is it that you have? We have mm -hmm. a Blanco, which is rested for about three months. Most Blancos aren't rested at all. So ours is actually rested. It soaks in that agave flavor, so it gives you that very smooth feeling and flavor when it's going down your throat. So rested means that it's stayed out longer, right? I mean, I, I don't know nothing about yeah, the Yeah, because once it's distilled, it's kept in these stainless steel tanks. So that's rested. Usually okay. from there, they bottle it right away. So the Blanco's rested three months. Our second one is the Reposado. The that okay. is the Blanco. Okay. Um, that's the last one. The, okay. the middle one is Reposado, and that one is aged. Ours is aged anywhere from 8 to 12 months. The Ooh. Mexican government only requires about two months. So ours is aged a lot longer, and it's aged in these bourbon oak barrels I can smell it which is what gives it the color <laughs> yes and the smell and the taste it's, it's it's amazing then the last one here is añejo and this is the top of the top and this one is aged for anywhere from 20 to 24 months typically it's about 12 months most other brands and stuff would do it for but ours is 24 20 to 24 months so you get a lot more flavor a lot more smells a lot more smoothness and it's just so much more enjoyable Actually, um, smell it all the way over here. That's why I was, you know, smelling. Yeah. Um, what are the difference between smells, though? Like, which one's stronger? I wouldn't even know. It's not. It's not so much that it's stronger, but you get different smells out of the different ones. So, like the blanco, for instance, since it's rested in stainless steel, you smell a lot more of the agave. So you get citrus notes, you get herbal notes, you get floral notes out of the blanco. When you move over oh, to, I can smell it all right. <laughs> Just but I can't drink it. I'm gonna be tipsy. I'm gonna leave that to you, our taster. <laughs> there you go. Try that one out. <laughs> You're gonna let us know. What's the the flavor? You know what? I can definitely, I can definitely taste the citrus notes. Citrus. It is extremely smooth. Yeah. Smooth. I mean, it's, yeah. It's not you know, so is that was, the way it's supposed no to be? Smooth. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So when you move on to the darker ones, you get more of the walnut flavor, the hazelnut, walnut? you get the caramel, you get vanilla, you get a oh, lot I of smell different the vanilla. Yes. notes on that one. You still get some of the citrus, you get some of the flora, but it's all just kind of... Is this one much harder? No. Do you get that? Tequila? A lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> assume that the darker ones are harsher than the lighter ones. Darker ones are actually a lot smoother because they've been aged a lot longer. Okay. Now you talked about. Well, before go 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 ahead and taste <laughs> it. Go ahead and taste it. But I, I can smell it here. Yes. I do want to talk about the plants, though. You were talking. You said that they they were made out of different plants, so. Well, you know. there's different types of plants, but ours is just 100% blue agave. So ours is only the blue agave. <laughs> yeah, that's that that brought, that gave me the. That's what I'm for today. <laughs> so then they have it. All of them were by blue agave. Yes, all of ours are 100% blue agave. Okay, all of them. And so, one, which one's the one that that gives you that full flavor? Because the, the, añejo, the middle one's my hair, so I can't taste it. You get it. a lot of flavor out of all of them, mm -hmm. but the añejo is the one you get the most different types of flavors out of it because there's so many different mixtures, and the resting gives it a lot more time to soak in all those flavors. Which one is the strongest for you? I know every taste bud is different. Yeah, everyone's so different. Um, a lot of people assume that the darker ones are stronger, but to me, the darker ones are so much smoother. And really? Yeah, and and the blanco. What do you say? I agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> see, and, and usually we go blanco for shots, reposado for mixing, and añejo for sipping on. That's kind of my theory, but everybody has their own way of doing it. Okay, so do you, can you can you bake with it? Can you? Yes, I know you I know can, we're gonna do some cocktails today, but definitely. could you cook with it? You can cook with it. You can make desserts with it. You can make popsicles with it. You can do margaritas, popsicles. And, Martinis and all kinds of cool stuff. Awesome! I am so I'm so excited. Um, well, girls, um, I think we should 
cheer to the end of the week. I want to hear that. No tequila faces, and we'll be right back with every day. Stay with us for tomorrow's stars. Are you in every way woman? Every woman celebrates tomorrow's stars, and today I'd like to introduce Cornelia. Welcome, Cornelia, to the show. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Commander. I am so glad to see you here in Los Angeles. We've seen you all over town. You can also find her on After Buzz. Today yes. you're on our stage. Take it away. Thank you. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Like she said, I'm originally from Michigan, Flint, Michigan, which is an hour outside of Detroit. But I never really go back to visit because as soon as you step off the plane, you lose your job. I don't know if you ever knew you knew that. <laughs> you get off the plane, you're like, did I just lose my gig? I lost my job. You broke. You lost everything. I also have a crazy mom. Anybody have crazy moms? Yes. If, if, what I like to say is if you don't know or have a crazy mom, you're usually the crazy mom. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> My mom is uh, crazy. I caught her watching Fatal Attraction with a pen and a notepad. That's when I found out she was crazy. I walked in and she was taking notes, OK? But it was the 80s. I was raised in the 80s. My mom had a jerry curl. So that explains it. She had jerry curl and a drawer full of shoulder pads. So I don't know whether. As a child, whenever we would go places, she would be like, girl, that outfit would look good with some shoulder pads. And we would have to go in the room and get the shoulder pads. And I'm like, Mom, I'm six. Like, what am I going to do with shoulder pads? I'm six years old, really. Uh, she also would use crazy scenes in her favorite movies to teach us lessons. Anybody familiar with Boys in the Hood? Mid-movie, Boys in the Hood, Ricky, who is the star football player, gets shot in the chest, and he dies, unfortunately. But during that time in the movie, my mom looked at me and my sister and was like, you see, that's what happens when you don't do the dishes and clean up the bathroom like I told you. You see that? Get in there and do what I told you to do. Ridiculous. I just wasn't raised right, guys. That's the point. I wasn't raised right. My dad took me and my sister out of ballet class because he was tired of missing Soul Train on Saturdays. So he was like, you know what? Houdini was on last week, and I'm going to miss Boy George next time. Get your stuff. Let's go forever. And I couldn't. I never went back. I think it was because he wanted to be a Soul Train dancer secretly because he would make us move all the furniture out of the living room, and he'd be like, come on, kids, we gonna kill them this week, yeah. But he was the only person who got to dance, and me and my sister would be sitting there waiting to get in all the time, all the time. Like, when we gonna get to dance, daddy? Never, we never got to dance. It's just crazy. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you, I appreciate that. My aunt uh, wouldn't babysit us right. Uh, she used to give us special pop with our spaghetti for dinner. OK. When I got to college, I realized Special Pop was Seagram's Fuzzy Naval Wine Cooler. That's what it was. It was wine cooler. I was like, yo, is this Special Pop? This is delicious. I've been looking all over for this. This is delicious. Where you get that? They're like the corner store? Uh, OK, I guess. But that's just how I was raised. It was. You know, it was a different time, and it was a different era. Um, I'm also, uh, you know what? On that note, I'm just going to wrap it up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's been amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> man. Everyone like, wanted to get back to our community to find out how you, too, can match our donations for undergarments for, for needy kids. Go to everywaywoman.com. We'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. you. for about four years now. Yeah? Yeah. Do you love it here? I like it. I don't like the traffic. Are you in every way woman? Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. This has been an Every Way Woman production. Whether I'm just waiting or sitting at home, staying just to watch my clothes, I'm gonna go and live my life. That means working nine to five, cause I'm an everyday woman. I'm an everyday woman. Independent, no, I'm meant it.
it's no surprise. Hard working 24 7, man, I've got to tell them I'm an everywhere woman. Are you an everywhere woman?